Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. Today we're going to be discussing Async Rat. Uh, call it whatever you will, if this is a Trojan, if this is a remote administration tool, if this is a command and control framework. Again, the goal is the same. Um, this allows an attacker to interact with your system and it comes with a lot of different features for them to launch their post-exploitation uh, part of their attack kill chain. So this tool is open source. It's been around since 2019. It's been used by um, script kiddies, criminal organizations, and you know APT groups alike. Uh, one of the benefits of this commodity malware is again, just that accessibility. Um, anyone of any skill level can pick this up and use this. And especially for more advanced threat actors, sometimes they want to blend in and look like you know, a commodity attacker instead of showing that sophistication. And the bottom line is, uh, well, this works. It's still effective. It gets around defenses. So this is yet one of those other things that we wanted to take a closer look at in this threat snapshot, again, because we have been seeing a lot of this activity in the real world, and also take a look at this in Snap Attack to see how we can better defend against them. So enough rambling here. Um, Splunk's threat research team put out a great blog post. They did a very good deep dive into async rat some of its capabilities and added a bunch of detection content for um you know their open source uh, the splunk research team application and, and all of that so definitely recommend taking a look at this um, it'll highlight a lot of the you know different activities the different capabilities and again you've got those uh, playbooks that you can use here um, one of the things that i do want to point out and uh, was think a little bit earlier in here is again this this tool frequently does top a lot of the you know common threats and threat uploads so um, we can see async rat here um, about halfway through the list for um, any run and again we see a lot of this activity so um, it's definitely worth taking a look at um, as i mentioned this is an open source uh, remote administration tool uh, it's written in c sharp and again that would be used on windows systems both as the um, attacker machine as well as the, the victim machine. So it's going to compile down to a, like a .NET library. Lots of different features out of the box. So again, you can view screen, you can um, disable Windows Defender, other antivirus, you have your key loggers, you can interact uh, with the, the server, have you know, dropped to a shell. Um, you know, a lot of the things that you would expect from this, as well as some, you know, obfuscation, encryption, and other things to get around a lot of those defenses. So without further ado, why don't we hop over to the platform and let's take a look. So a couple of uh, threats that we've captured and replicated here in Snap Attack. One that um, we've been seeing a lot is async rat um, being launched with that um, Microsoft OneNote malicious office document. Um, as we mentioned, again, there's a lot of different initial access payloads that have been going around, um, different containers and OneNote documents, as we, we talked about earlier this year, is um, commonly being used by attackers. So, you know, this is one of those ways that um, we've seen people in the wild packaging up a malicious OneNote document to eventually launch async rat. So we put together one of these where you can see what that would look like. So, you know, we've got that malicious OneNote document. You're going to have to click here, you know, to view that document and open that up. And it's going to do some interesting stuff in the background. So it's going to, you know, download um, a stager through PowerShell. It's going to um, open up that stager and eventually load, you know, async rat here. So good news is this also lights up like a Christmas tree. Um, there's lots of different detections for this um, initial access vector. And again, when you take a look at this in the process graph view, um, we'll break this down here for you. Um, but this is very evident how this is, again, very noisy with all of these living off the land techniques. So you get spearfished or you get social engineered into, you know, downloading this malicious OneNote document. You open that up and when you click that button, it's going to launch that um, MSHTA file. That is going to use WMI to kick off some additional commands. So you're going to see that popping up under the WMI PRV SE uh, process here. So this is actually going out now to get the second stage. So you can see that invoke web request. It's going to uh, transfer SH to download this batch file, which again is going to launch another PowerShell, another CMD, and eventually get down to um, you know our async rat. Um, this is also fun that they're using um, some masquerading here. So if you have that system32.bat.exe running out of a temp directory. So um, interesting choice of names from, you know, what we've seen in the wild. Um, so, you know, it's just uh, another 
avenue for you know detection opportunities here. So how would I detect um, you know kind of this kill chain, this process? So a couple of different things um, that we can look at. So that async rat loader process. Again, there's lots of living off the land opportunities here. Um, one of them here is just to kind of take a look at that um, you know PowerShell commandlet that we have. So this is going to actually open up um, you know that file. It's going to do some decryption. You can see the the cryptography API is being called here. Um, it's going to you know reflectively load that um, DLL that system reflection assembly. So um, you can you know if, if the attacker you know does end up changing some of this, we would have to update detection logic. But um, good news is because all of this is you know very much using living off the land techniques, very easy to kind of keep up to date and monitor these sort of things. So keying in on a couple of key aspects of how they're using this is a, a good detection strategy. And again, you know, as part of this, um, the attacker can definitely change up a lot of their TTPs. But if they are using malicious OneNote documents, we do have detections in there. Definitely recommend checking out the last snapshot that we did. But this was just one of those example detections here where we can see OneNote is dropping, um, you know, suspicious files into, you know, these other, um, you know, temp folders. So this is a way that you can see that these are being, you know, extracted. And this is a, a good way to, you know, hunt for that activity. Uh, another threat that we're going to take a look at here is um, having async rat launch a shell. So again, there's lots of different features and functionalities of this tool. We're going to just launch an interactive shell. So um, a little less creative in terms of that initial access payload. We're just going to double click it and we're going to hop on over to our attacker machine. So we can see here that that um, C2 is going to check in momentarily and that's going to pop up. So we do have access to this. Um, you can see that connected in on port 8808. And we are going to just drop to a remote shell. So this is going to pop up and we're going to run a very simple who am I. So again, very easy to interact with system files. Um, again, as an attacker, I could upload, you know, other, you know, software. I could download files from that machine. Lots of different things that we could do to interact. but. Just wanted to have a very basic use case because it's very common that an attacker, you know, when they get hands on keyboard with a tool like this, is going to do interaction with the file system and, and other processes. So uh, we can see here that chain where we have, you know, async rat that's launched and it's going to again spawn a CMD and it's going to run those commands. So that sort of parent child relationship, seeing CMD spawning from weird processes or seeing a lot of those spawn, because again, that's going to spawn every time they run a command. You know, detections around that are going to be, you know, very easy to spot this sort of behavior. That's also true of other C2 frameworks that, again, are going to have that fork and run or spawning, you know, type behavior where it's going to launch those rather than, you know, injecting that into another existing process and trying to masquerade that. So definitely very detectable there. A um, couple of interesting detections around this that we're going to talk about. So async red is often called stub or stub.exe. That is the um, original file name. So when you compile it, that's what it's going to be called. Um, Sysmon and uh, a few other EDRs and tools do actually log the original file name. So that is a good way to look for this uh, to see. Um, tell me any process where that's the original file name and it's been renamed. So you know, we can see here with uh, the Sysmon log that the original file name was stub.exe, but this is um, you know being called async client here. Obviously, the attacker can and will likely rename the binary, but um, that original file name is a compilation artifact. So if you have that log source availability, that is a possible way of looking at this. And again, based on the sophistication that a lot of these attackers use, um, oftentimes they might not be changing the, um, the original file name and some of the other compilation artifacts as part of this. Um, another way that we can take a look at this, again, depends a lot on the sophistication of the attacker, is what network ports they're using. So by default, there's some hard-coded hard ports in here, um, 6606, 7707, 8808. Again, these are non-common, non-standard ports. Um, chances are in an enterprise network, you're probably going to block those ports anyway. So you might not even see that sort of activity. But if the attacker doesn't change the destination port that it's going to reach out to for C2, you could certainly look at these. Um, Again, it's probably going to be a more uh, or a less sophisticated attacker that's going to use that. Um, someone more sophisticated is probably going to use uh, 80 or 443 or some other commonly open ports and try and blend in with that traffic. But this is kind of a, a low hanging fruit way of detecting that. 
Uh, we'll move on to one last threat that we have in here. And again, there's definitely some other content available for subscribers. Um, this is async rat and it's using the, the bypass UAC, um, the user account control. So, you know, very commonly when you are, um, you know, interacting with, um, you know, uh, you're installing the C2 and you're, you know, attacking, you might not originally land in a privileged process. You're probably going to be as the regular user account. So like the user double clicked here, and this is a medium integrity context process. Um, and then you're going to want to be able to do things that require administrator access. So think about if you wanted to, um, you know, get credentials, if you wanted to, um, you know, use Mimikatz or things, I should probably hop back here. So that bypass UAC is going to allow you to do that. Um, depending on the sophistication, they can um, silently bypass UAC. They can actually um, also have a, a UAC prompt if the user isn't an administrator, just say, you know, hey, do you want to, you know, auto elevate this process? So you can see this UAC prompt where they're requiring you to manually click that here. Um, again, it's probably one of the oldest tricks in the book is just uh, ask for permission. And uh, we would be able to see here that this is going to call back again. And this time it's going to be launched in an elevated context. So if we wanted to take a look at what that looks like here on Snap Attack, um, we do have the process graph. Um, so again, we have that um, async rat client here. As I mentioned, this is just a regular user count. It's that medium integrity level. And then it's going to do a CMD, basically like a run as here um, with the async rat client to say, I want to launch that again now here as a high integrity process. So this kind of chain is something that's very easy to detect. And again, you're going to see this a lot with async rat. Um, if you go to the source code, which again is awesome to look at for an open source uh, piece of malware, um, they use a lot of these, you know, living off the land, a lot of built-in Windows techniques to implement a lot of their uh, tradecraft. So, um, you know, if an attacker doesn't modify these functions or features, uh, this is going to be something that's very detectable. So looking for, you know, the CMD, looking for um, CMD.exe with the start and the exit in there at a high integrity level, um, this is definitely a way that you can look for that privilege escalation here that's built into async rat. So that's our threat, snap threat snapshot for this week. Um, snap Attack helps you stay ahead of threats like async rat and others. So like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.